And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be using one of my favorite foods, and we're going to use it in three different recipes, and that is that is apples. We're going to use two different kinds of apples. We're going to make a baked apple. We're going to do an apple and turkey quesadilla, and then we're going to make an apple and red cabbage slaw. So, so good. But the first thing I want to talk about quickly is something I bet many of you have never seen before. And right here I have examples of it. These are called pawpaws, P A W. P A W. And this one is very, very green and not ripe. So you've got them here, I line them up in like three stages of ripeness. Green starting to ripen, getting a little bit better, and then completely and totally ripe. Now, these are a native uh, fruit here in America. They're not that common, but if you live near a pawpaw tree or know someone that has a pawpaw tree like me, my Elijah went this morning and picked these for me so I could show them to you because they have a pawpaw tree. But I want to read some of the facts about them on here because I think it's just something different and they're coming into season now and you want to eat them when they're like this. They smell divine. They smell almost banana-ish if you if you can a really really ripe banana you know how it has that wonderful fragrance well that's what they smell like and I'll cut that one open for you in just a second and show you but I want to read some facts and I just looked it up online and I just there we go I'm on petersonpawpaws.com and I just want to kind of give you a few little facts about it it's a super fruit meaning it's extremely healthy. Let me enlarge it because I can't read it. Uh, because we're doing apples today, I wanted you to know that this particular fruit is in the family of apples. It is the pawpaw belongs to the, forgive me if I say this wrong, but it's uh, Ananasi, the custard apple family, a large family of trees, shrubs that are widespread throughout the old and world tropics. Uh, some of the finest fruits in the world belong to this family of apples. It is uh, part of the deciduous forests of eastern North America, which is where I'm located, and it is the largest edible native fruit of North America. All right, uh, it is almost the last tree to leaf out in the spring, and that tells of its tropic origin, meaning it's got to have warmer weather. Now, let's read uh, the pawpaws and the nuts fed Lewis and Clark when they were on their expedition exploring the West. Now, here are some nutritional facts. The water content is low compared to bananas, it's about 75%. Most fruits have about 85% or higher water content. The nutritional value exceeds apples, peaches, and grapes in vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. The, uh, okay, it does have antioxidants. It has uh, compounds that are beneficial. The bark and Seeds are high in uh, potent compounds that are poisonous to most insect feeders, oddly enough, but you can eat them. They're really, really good. A great way to use these, you can just cut them open and eat them straight out. But you can also, instead if you want to make a banana pudding, instead of using bananas, make a pawpaw pudding, and then you, you can just use it just like you would the banana. So let me show you. You want to eat them when they're like this. They're very, very perishable, so you've got to eat them when they become ripe. And I'm going to cut it open, and it's got a flesh in there, and it also has these 
well, they're black when you clean off the seeds. You don't want to eat the seeds. You want to just peel that flesh away from the seeds. Let me open one that's not so ripe and show you the difference. You can't cut all the way through because it's got a, the pit in the middle, the seeds in the middle. And here you go. They almost have a custardy type consistency. You can't dice them like you would bananas. You're going to get the pulp out, eat them with a spoon, or you, know, you can eat them straight up except for the seeds. You don't want to eat the seeds. But there you go. There are just something that I bet many of you had never seen, and that's pawpaws. And I thank my Elijah for picking those for me this morning. That's my little sweet boy that you see on here with me sometimes. He's in my audience today. He's watching. But let's get busy cooking with a relative of the pawpaw family, and that is apples, or our apples. I love them. And when they're in season, I use them in so many different ways. And for this first recipe, I have chosen one of my favorites. Now, I had never eaten Macintosh apples until Mike and I got married. And when we first got married, we lived in Michigan. We lived in Lansing, Michigan for a while while he was in law school. And of course, apples are huge in Michigan. And so I first tasted, we had a wonderful farmer's market called Horrocks Farmer's Market that I would go to. And I first tasted fresh Macintosh apples straight off the trees there. And oh my goodness, they are so, so, so good. So I'm going to use these today for cooking because they really do hold up well in cooking. Red Delicious, for example, don't do well with cooking. They're great for snacking and great for light, like I'm going to use them in the quesadilla for just very light cooking. But for a dish like this, you want to use something that will hold up well in the cooking. And I'm going to use an apple corer, and I'm just going to core out the center of my apple. If you don't have a corer, you can use a... Uh, like a scooper, a melon scooper, and I'm actually going to use that to help. I'll show you what I'm going to do with these. I'm leaving the skin on because I like the skin, and they've been scrubbed, so they're fine to eat. Now, I have cut myself more than I care to admit trying to get the core out of the middle of an apple core, and I need my round spoon. Pardon me just a second. So what you'll need to do is get a spoon like this and just pop that out. Don't try to do that with your finger because I promise you, you will cut yourself. So we're just going to core our apples and I'm going to take a quick break and all I'm going to do are core my apples and put them in the baking dish and when I come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to fill these apples and then we're going to bake them. I'll be back in just a minute and we'll proceed on with our delicious baked Macintosh apples. All right, now, I just have my apples that I cored and I put in this baking dish, and we're gonna make the filling. And for that, I need about three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar, about a fourth of a teaspoon or so of allspice, some cinnamon, some salt. We're gonna stir that together lightly. And then we're gonna add in, I'm using walnuts today, but you could add almonds or pecans or whatever kind of nut you want to use just chopped up, you know, into smaller pieces. And you can use your fingers, it's okay. Now, we're gonna take our mixture and we're gonna put a little bit of this down in the holes that we made. And it's okay if some of it spills over, it's not a problem because we're gonna put some apple cider in there anyway. And that'll just kind of make a caramel sauce is what that will do. You can also, another little recipe for you, if you wanted to core the apples like this and stuff them with peanut butter and then bake them. Oh, so good. Or honey and peanut butter mixed. I'm gonna put this down in there, kind of pack it down in there. And 
then we're going to take some butter. Your oven should be at 350 degrees. We're going to take some butter and we're going to put a little piece of butter on each apple just right there in the center and what that's going to do is that's going to melt of course and then that will mix with the brown sugar and in the heat form like a caramel sauce which if you have never had caramel apples you're really missing something because they are delicious one of my favorite flavors and then I've got some this is apple cider but if you need if you've got apple juice or something like that that's fine I'm just giving it some moisture about three-fourths of a cup of just apple cider and you could totally do this in your crock pot if you wanted to you could put these in your crock pot and then put it on low and let it go all day long and oh boy would you have a good good dessert so these need to go in the oven and they need to bake for about 35 minutes 40 minutes or until the apples are good and tender so let's just put those in there and they're just going to bake and while they're baking we are going to make um, one of my favorite things which is I love coleslaws of all kinds and I am going to make a apple coleslaw let me get my stuff out of the way here if you have never had apple coleslaw well let me tell you you're missing something now I'm going to use whoops, carrots celery, apples, and cabbage. I don't want to shred my apples until I'm almost ready to mix it because the apples will turn brown. I'm using a head of red cabbage. You could use green cabbage if you wanted and you could buy the bag of the pre-shredded up cabbage, uh, the coleslaw mix if you wanted to. But I adore red cabbage. It's, it's my favorite. I, I love it, love it, love it and I am going to shred it. I'm just gonna put it in my food processor, however you uh, need to cut it. Let's just do the big head first. And I'm using the larger holes of my grater. And I am not a fan of this food processor. It gives me a fit sometimes, but we'll see if it's gonna work. And my cabbage is too tall, so let's go with the shorter one. And I'm just going to shred up this cabbage. See how quick that works? That's why I like a food processor. It just makes really, really quick work of shredding. Come on, food processor. Okay, I'm going to have to work on the food processor. There we go. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm just going to keep shredding up this cabbage and putting it in a large bowl. When I come back, we're going to make the slaw, the dressing for the slaw, check our apples, and we're going to make some quesadillas. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, I have our beautiful head of cabbage shredded, and I also shredded four carrots uh, in the food processor, but you can also buy pre-shredded carrots, but these are cheaper, and you got to have your food processor out anyway, so I just do it that way. I have here four ribs of celery, because it adds just not only flavor, but a wonderful crunch, and it happens to be one of my favorites, but if you don't like it, you can leave celery out, but it is delicious. Just want to cut it into smallish pieces, just like that. This is a very healthy slaw that keeps well in the refrigerator for a couple of days. You can eat on it, and you can totally make it ahead. It's actually better if it's made ahead. The flavors have a 
chance to get to know each other and blend, and it's just better if you can. Now, I'm going to add to mine some craisins, which are those sweet and dried cranberries. You could use raisins if you wanted, or you could leave it out. And at the end, I'm going to toss in some sunflower seeds, but I don't want to add those until I'm ready to serve because I don't want them to get, you know, soft. I want them to stay crisp. Now, for the dressing, I have one lemon that I'm going to zest as well as juice. I love lemon zest. I love the flavor of lemon. And if you've watched this program much at all, you know that. It's just one of my favorite tastes and it just adds such a brightness to the foods that you're cooking. If you find something blandish, you know, in flavor to where it just needs something, try lemon. You'd be surprised at how quickly just a squeeze of lemon in something can brighten up or a vinegar, an acid of some sort. Really does make a difference. Now, I'm going to use my trusty little wooden reamer, and I've got a little strainer there to catch any seeds, which this one doesn't seem to have any. Some, you know, you get some lemons, and they're just full of seeds, and then you get some that don't have any. If you can find the little Meyer lemons, oh, they're so good, and they're thinner skinned, but they, they're so delicious. If you can find the little Meyer lemons, you can use that too. They do have a little bit of a different taste, but they're delicious. Now, to my lemon juice, I'm just gonna pour that in a bowl so I can make my dressing. I'm gonna add a little bit of sweetness. I'm gonna add about, I don't know, two tablespoons or so of honey. If you can find local honey, all the better. I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar because we're, we're continuing our theme of apples here. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and some celery seed. I like the flavor of celery seed in my coleslaw. Now here I have just about a two inch piece of fresh ginger. Mm, so good. And I'm going to grate this. I want in total, I don't know, maybe two tablespoons or so of ginger. You turn it over that see there's what you get here the beautiful pulp and juice the reason I'm zesting it over the bowl is you get juice sometimes that comes out and you don't want to waste that juice I'm gonna use about half of this and you know when you go to the store and you buy ginger you don't have to buy that big hand they're called hands of ginger just break off whatever you need that's what I did this morning is when I went to the store I just broke off the amount that I thought I would need with a little bit extra for a handle that's probably enough because ginger can be a strong ingredient, but it's delicious. I love it. Then I'm going to whisk those together with a spoon. Just kind of stir it together. Then we're going to add some extra virgin olive oil, about six tablespoons or so. Oops. I keep mine sometimes in a little squeezy bottle. It makes it a little easier. Just whisk that in. If you don't have any olive oil, you've got so many flavors going on. If you want to use canola oil or vegetable oil, feel free to do that. And then pour that over your dressing or over your slaw. And then use a spoon to mix all that together. Look how pretty that is. Oh, it is so very, very good. Now, the cabbage will give off some of its water content, the um, salt in the dressing, and the acid from the vinegar and the lemon juice will kind of make that give off some of its water, which will make it a little bit, uh, the dressing a little thinner. So don't overdress. You may think, oh, it needs a little more dressing. Wait, because it will give off quite a bit of its juice. Now, I didn't want to add the apples until I have the vinegar in there because that will keep them from turning brown. If you don't have a core like this, let me show you what you can do. Cut it in half, then cut it in quarters, 
and then just take a little paring knife and boom, there you go, you can cut out the core. That's another way to core your apples. And I'm using the Macintosh in here. In this recipe, you could use Macintosh, you could use the Red Delicious, you could use Gala, you could use really any kind of apple in here you wanted. Granny Smith would be good, but it will be tart. And you want to cut your apple into slices and then dice it into pieces about the same size as your celery. So I'm gonna take a quick break. All I'm gonna do, I'm using two apples. I'm just gonna, as soon as I get the apple chopped, I'm gonna add it to the bowl because I want that vinegar on there to keep it from turning brown. You can't do the apple cutting ahead of time. You have to do that right then so that the acids will keep it from getting brown. But we're gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna clean up. When I come back, our apples will be done and we're gonna make some quesadillas. I'll be back in just a minute. and all I did was just take one out and put a little bit of the juice that forms in the pan over it. If you had some heavy whipping cream or some ice cream or whatever kind of thing you wanted, some vanilla ice cream or maybe some caramel ice cream, even coffee ice cream, whatever kind of ice cream you like would be so, so good over top of that. But, and our slaw is done. What we're gonna do is just mix in some sunflower seeds just before serving and now I'm gonna make a quesadilla this is one of those dinners that you can put together in absolutely no time I have a non-stick skillet preheating it's actually hot over medium-high heat I'm gonna take it off the heat for just a second and I'm going to I have here some flour tortillas. Now I bought the kind that are whole wheat and they're high fiber. So, but any flour tortilla that you want to use will be fine. And I'm going to take some shredded, I, I like the finely shredded cheddar cheese and I like sharp cheddar. And I'm going to put that on the whole thing. And then I'm going to layer over some turkey, just some deli sliced turkey half, over half. And then I'm going to take, now these are red delicious apples because that's our theme for the day. I've scrubbed them. And I'm just gonna take some thin slices of apple. If you have never had apples with cheddar cheese, you are in for a treat. Just some thin slices of an apple. And then I'm going to fold that over I have sprayed my skillet with non-stick spray and your quesadilla, cook it on one side. All you're trying to do here is melt the cheese and warm the turkey. The apple is not gonna cook. It might soften just a little tiny bit, but it's not gonna cook all the way through. And that's, you want that though. You want that contrast of the crisp apple with the melted cheese and the turkey. It's so good. If you didn't want to use apples, you could use pears too and do this very same thing. You know, you could do, do turkey, just slice turkey with pear and maybe Swiss cheese or Gouda cheese would be delicious. So about a minute and then flip it over and if your apple comes out, that's okay. Just put it back in there. And the reason I'm using a nonstick skillet is some of the cheese is gonna come out. That's just the way it works. That's okay, it'll clean right up. About a minute, and you've got quesadillas. Quesadillas are one of those things that are so easy to make and you can put anything you wanted to. You could totally do apples with banana or apples with some peanut butter and banana or you could do the um, jarred hazelnut spread, you know the kind that has the chocolate and the hazelnut Nutella, make some Hershey's, has all kinds of 
different those kinds of spreads out now and you could use that and then put peanut butter on there with some apple slices or bananas or whatever you wanted do the same thing and it would be wonderful quesadillas are so simple and sometimes I'll just flip it back over just for 30 seconds or so more and that's it and there you go and you have got a wonderful healthy delicious lunch or dinner either one that you wanted to do for your family any day of the week. So let's do a recap real quick. We've got our wonderful Macintosh apples that we stuffed with a mixture of honey, brown sugar, some walnuts and some spices, and then we poured over, dotted it with a little butter, and then we poured over some apple cider into the dish and baked them covered with aluminum foil for about 30 minutes delicious with some ice cream. Then we've got our wonderful apple slaw that we made with carrot and red cabbage and a little celery, some craisins, some sunflower seeds, and we made a light, delicious dressing to go over that. And then our wonderful cheddar cheese and apple turkey quesadilla. Light, easy lunch or dinner, or really you could even do that for breakfast and roll it up and be on your way out the door. Thank you for joining with me. Here's how you can use two different kinds of apples three different ways. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.